We start with a riddle. How could anyone in the heartland ever fall victim to a hurricane? One that blew ashore long ago and far away. Well, the answer is a flood car, totaled by salt water, but sold as clean to an unwitting buyer. Superstorm Sandy destroyed over a quarter million cars over a year ago, and now too many of them are washing up for sale with clean titles. How does it happen? Who's stopping it? Well, tonight we have a major update to our summer investigation for this Nightline on the Lookout. When cars are in a flood for any length of time, a place like this is where most should probably come to die. But not all do. We learned this lesson firsthand thanks to this good looking pickup. We paid 20 grand for her in New Jersey just two months ago. But now we'd like to crush her in Texas. Because even after this truck was inundated in the salt water of Hurricane Sandy, she still washed up on a used car lot with a clean title for sale to an unsuspecting customer. Wow, it's got leather in here. And since a flood car with a bogus clean title can be a dangerous thing, you got to wonder how many more are there. How you doing? That's the question I wanted to ask the good folks here at insurance company USAA. And we're here to see Rebecca Hirsch. Good to see your job's license. Sure. We had hauled our evidence across country and up to the gates of their headquarters. You're going to have to turn your camera off, okay? Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Yeah, I know, but sometimes I can be persuasive. you got to see this tow truck we have to bring this truck down here to show you. It's got dragons on it. It's awesome. You'd love it. Come, come check it out and chat with me. But we never got past security, and it looked like a few defiant emails would be the end of our effort to talk to USAA. Are you kidding? A very small part to play in this story? How can you shirk that responsibility? But then came a pretty remarkable about face. Can I call you Kevin? Can I call you General? Take your pick, Bill. I answered a vote. An about face led by the Army General turned USAA executive who invited us back. And this place is so much more impressive than I pictured <laughs> it would be. Yeah. From the gate, I got I'm, I'm just curious. Um, there was so much resistance to sit down and talk before. Why, why, why'd you decide to come? talk to us today. Truth is, at this point, I'm all ready for journalistic combat with the general. But then he said the one thing I never expected. I think we would want to tell you thanks for shining the light on something that's troubling to all of us. Wow, great. But why is the good general falling on his sword? Well, it has a lot to do with exactly how this Ford ended up back on the highway. If I can walk away giving you 20 for everything. Okay, you take it now? I want to take it now. And it all began on a dark, stormy night. When Superstorm Sandy hit the Northeast last fall, few were prepared for the misery she would bring. Nearly 300 people lost their lives, thousands more lost their homes, and then there were the cars. An estimated quarter million of them submerged for days in corrosive salt water. The months following the storm, many were parked at this abandoned airport on Long Island. Just look at them all. And each one a potential highway hazard because saltwater flood cars are a special kind of wreck. Flood cars literally rot from the inside out. Days, weeks, or months down the road, parts are going to fail. Which makes it a bit worrisome when you see runways full of flood cars now vacant. Yep, that's the same airport, packed after Sandy but empty today. So the obvious question is where did they all go? And the answer, like many things in life, has a lot to do with looks. Now, some cars obviously belong in a junkyard final resting place, but there are countless others that go through storms like Sandy that look just fine at first blush. That's probably Atlantic Ocean. And as the folks at the used car tracking service Carfax shows, they look even better after a five hour makeover. They estimate that over 100,000 sandy battered cars are back on the road tonight, not just around Jersey, but across America. We see the Mercedes on lot right there. Here's one in Omaha, and another in St. Louis. You know, it's kind of an old fashioned notion that they traded it in locally, right? And even a landlocked lawman in Iowa is on the lookout for hurricane wreckage passed off as pure. Right. Even though Hurricane Sandy happened, what, 
1,200 miles away. These cars are shipped all over the place. Dealers buy them, turn around, fix them up, make them look good, don't tell you about it. Our Ford F-350 truck is one of those vehicles. It was owned by a guy named Mike Kennedy. Yeah, how are you, sir? Mike's kids loved the truck so much, they named it Spirit. And we know that when Sandy hit, the Kennedys watched seawater swallow their Point Pleasant, New Jersey neighborhood, and with it, Spirit the truck. She was underwater for two days. Mike's a retired Navy man, so his insurance company is the military-focused USAA. They declared Spirit a total loss, sent Mike a check for $32,000, $213.04. New Jersey authorities tell us that it is the insurer's responsibility to brand the vehicle title, forever marking it as a salvage vehicle and knocking serious money off its value. But somehow, Spirit made it through the auction and onto D&D's lot with a price tag of nearly $20,000. A lot of dough for what the experts say should be a pile of parts. So we decided to buy it with the help of our producer, Aaron, 20 large in cash, and a few hidden cameras in her glasses and water bottle. Just to make things interesting, yeah, we send Thank Spirit's you. former yeah. owner along for the ride. Here we go. How you doing? Good, how are you? I want to buy a truck. I want a big truck. She enters a lot and is quickly chatted up by a salesman named Jack, who very quickly gets her behind the wheel of Spirit. One hitch, the power seats don't work. I think the fuse is out on the seat. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's got to change the fuse, he told me. Now, maybe it's a blown fuse, or maybe it's because they were submerged in salt water for two days. Now, Jack did reveal that a Carfax report showed that Spirit had been in a flood, but shrugged it off. You know, the Carfax said something about a flood or something on it. It's like a glitch or mistake, but it's clean title. A short time later, Aaron's got a deal. Okay. She hands over the 20 large, she signs the purchase agreement, and now Aaron owns the truck. Here we go. How does it feel to be driving your old truck again? It feels great. It feels good to be driving it again. But I don't want it. <laughs> you can have it because she's not gonna last too long. The purchase creates a bittersweet reunion for Spirit's former owner. And Mike can't resist taking it home for one more visit with the kids, where he notices a few obvious signs of her watery history. Well, I had tools in the glove box, and believe it or not, the tools are still here. <laughs> they're no longer functional tools because they're rusted shut. That water was up through here. The front seats don't work. When we bought it today, they claimed it was a fuse to bring it back, and they'd swap out the fuse. It's not a fuse. Um, I can't imagine what else doesn't work in there. These guys will. They are Jersey Shore mechanics, and they know a flood vehicle when they see one. That's definitely water-driven. There's no doubt about that. That's like fine silt. Oh my God, man. This thing might catch fire. fire. If an airbag blows up on you, you, you could crash. Would you put your family in there? Absolutely not in a million years. I wouldn't even drive this truck out of here. Seems like a good time for me to have a chat with Jack, the used car salesman at D&D Auto Sales, on unhidden cameras. So we got a reaction cam going on this one? Yes. But we don't want to tip them off. So Aaron makes an appointment to have those power seats checked out, and I will play the role of her tow truck driver. Let's go, Tom. 